Why was it important you to, to come to a place like Timberleaf today? Well, I'm I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that um, on this first tour around the state, I'm spending time uh, learning how Coloradans are at work because one of the things that was important to me is to be different from the kind of typical political tour where people show up and give a speech. Uh, I, Somebody told me in Pueblo the other day, you know, the job of a politician is to make people's lives better. And the best way to kind of figure out how you're going to do that is to learn more about people's lives. And one of the ways to learn more about people's lives is to spend time with them on the job, learn about their work, learn about their dreams, what got them here, what, what, ins what, what inspired them to start a business or to move to Colorado and, and work at a place like this. And so I wanted to spend time on the job with Coloradans. And you're talking about doing, like, I guess, like a different type of tour um, with such a big Democratic field. Uh, what do you think makes you, I guess, what sets you apart from the rest of the candidates running against or vying to run against Cory Gardner? Well, I think one of the things that sets me apart is that uh, I'm not uh, a career politician. Uh, I have a record in public service, particularly in foreign policy, representing the United States overseas. But this is really, uh, this is new to me. Um, and so I think I bring kind of an experience to the table, but, but a fresh voice and uh, a willingness to listen uh, that is different from others. I, I grew up here. This is an important place to me. This is a place that made me who I am. And I'm really motivated by the moment that we're in. Uh, this isn't something that I've been dreaming or planning to do for the last 20 years. This is something that I think I share with a lot of Coloradans, a sense that things just are off kilter right now. And uh, working people are still working hard, but getting less and less of the rewards and that we need to reset. And so this is, an, for me, this is something that is inspired by the moment that we're all living through. And uh, you kind of touched on, I guess, where you, um, I guess your background, um, what do you, um, as far as, I guess, like the experience you have with, with I guess, foreign policy, um, what, what do you hope to, I guess, bring to the Senate with that background? Well, I mean, I think, you know, m the conventional wisdom is that most voters don't vote based on foreign policy, and I think that's probably true. Most of us, when we go to vote, we vote on who we think is going to make our life better in our community. And, you know, different communities have different goals. Uh, I know that on the Western Slope, there's been a real push to diversify the economy, to bring businesses like Timberleaf to, to Junction, uh, to, to build the outdoor uh, rec industry here, et cetera. Um, you know, those things, uh, kitchen table issues, are, are the things that motivate people. But increasingly, I think when I talk to voters, I hear that they recognize that kitchen table issues are actually affected by the global economy. Uh, they're affected by tariffs and trade. Uh, they're affected by climate change. Uh, people recognize that climate change is increasingly a security and a health issue. And so those are the kinds of things that can only be solved through global cooperation. And the United States needs to be a leader in that. And I think the record that I bring in foreign policy is something that can actually drive uh, positive change at the kitchen table for people here in Colorado. Um, and I guess uh, I've got a, a couple, I guess, kitchen table type of uh, yeah. questions that, you know, are, seem to be hot topics uh, in, on the Western Slope and in Western Colorado. Um, do, you, do you have any sort of, I guess, goals that you would like to see maybe for um, our healthcare system and maybe even more specifically for this area, we have, a, I guess, a lot of issues with uh, veteran services? Sure, sure. I mean, Colorado has, uh, as you know, uh, on both uh, in the Front Range and on the Western Slope, we have a very high proportion of veterans uh, who have come back and made a home here. And obviously, whoever's representing us in Washington ha has to make sure that veterans get the care that they've earned and that they deserve. I think, you know, when you have a place like Grand Junction, which is uh, a great community that is far from a lot of other communities, time and distance make delivering services uh, more difficult, but that shouldn't be an excuse for not delivering the services that people have earned and, and that they need. Obviously, this is happening in a broader context of a series of challenges around healthcare, both in, in the in the delivery of healthcare and the healthcare industry as such, where drug prices are rising, insurance, uh, if, there, if it is available, is expensive and has a high deductible. Um, that's a problem that people face up and down the Western Slope, I know. Um, and there's also a change going on, which is that people are living longer. Uh, more people are on the job. That means that taking care of young kids is harder. Uh, it means taking care of our parents, our aging parents and grandparents is harder. And so that, too, has to be part of a comprehensive approach to healthcare. And uh, I guess another one of the um, issues that I guess has come up recently, um, we guess, uh, Public schools here in, uh, I guess, Mesa County are, they struggle, I guess yeah. is a good way to put it. And I know that you have a background um, in higher education with the state. Um, what, what are some, I guess, even, you know, 
on a national level, yeah. what, what are some um, issues you'd like to maybe address with the school systems? Well, first of all, the, the quality of education that you get shouldn't depend on the zip code that you live in. And that's something that we need to uh, work on across Colorado and across the country, making sure that folks who live in urban areas where there's high property taxes and, and, and more funding for schools aren't getting better education or better attention than those who live in more remote communities. Um, that's something that isn't just a Colorado issue, but it's, it's a whole United States issue. More generally, I think we're moving into uh, a new a new economy um, and we have to recognize that if we want to provide for our children's future we need to provide the investment and in education that they're going to need in order to be successful in a in, in a global economy um, and and I think that means everything from early childhood through to post-secondary you know the latest studies show that more than 70 percent of the jobs in Colorado are going to require a some sort of post-secondary certificate or two or four year degree by 2020 and for, for example, in Grand Junction, only uh, about 41% of adults over 25 have some sort of post-secondary credential or degree. So that means that we need to figure out ways to serve, including adult learners. It's not just about kids. Our education system needs to run through lifelong learning and give people the opportunity to come back to school, get the skills they need to, to get the next job and, and to build the future that, that they want. And, and I think that's what we should see this as. Education isn't just uh, something that we do kind of as a social program. This is an investment in helping people live lives of their own choosing and, and live the American dream. And, and we, can, we can build an American dream for the 21st century if we invest in education. Thank you very much, Dan. Is there anything else um, that you'd like to, I guess, emphasize today? No, it's just, it's great to be in Grand Junction again. I, uh, when I was the executive director of the Department of Higher Ed, I spent some time with students uh, at Colorado Mesa and was really inspired by them. And it's really fun to be back in this community. It's a special place and uh, we're lucky uh, to, to have this, the exciting growing economy here uh, as part of the fabric of Colorado today.